All right, let's see if we can learn how to uh, get started with Jenkins Continuous Integration Server with PHP application. Um, it seems that the hardest part to uh, getting started with Jenkins is kind of just wrapping your head around it, or at least it was for me. So I'm going to use this post at getphp.com. It's just a get a Jenkins CI server for PHP fast with Vagrant. And uh, in order for you to follow along, you'll just need git... Um, VirtualBox and Vagrant, which you can find right here on these posts. Um, I'm going to use the Jenkins PHP Vagrant uh, script found on GitHub here. And we're going to use this just to kickstart a quick virtual machine running Jenkins uh, that should be equipped with most of the tools that we need to get started. So, um, all right. We're just going to clone this down and then simply vagrant up. Now this takes quite a while uh, since I destroyed the VM last time I was using it. Um, this is going to take, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to actually get started the first time. After you have it, after you have the um, machine downloaded and started and configured for the first time, you brought it up for the first time, after that you can just jink, uh, vagrant halt and vagrant up again and it won't, it just takes you know a minute, a brief moment. So on top of this we're, we're going to need an application to work with so uh, I have a absolutely senseless FizzBuzz application that uh, I made for this to demo this I made it a while back, like six, six, eight months ago, but um, I never actually finished this tutorial, so that's what I'm here to do today. So this isn't quite perfect, but um, it definitely works. And I apologize for the audio quality. My computer's going to start its fan regime to uh, cool it back down because apparently it doesn't like spinning up a virtual machine that much. All right, while that's going, cover some of the my flawed conventions or possibly flawed conventions. Every project that I work with now or that I create, um, I have a few very common files and they're listed here. Uh, the build folder which uh, we or I use to hold the artifacts uh, of each build, you know, the log files, the reports, uh, so on. The source folder will uh, hold all the actual source code. Test folder for uh, PHP unit tests, um, or just tests in general, but I guess I've used PHP unit a, a while, so it seems the easiest to just throw that PHP in front of unit test, PHP unit test. I get ignore file, license file, readme file, and uh, the ant build file. I was going to type the ant build file up, create it as we worked here, but since um, I'd already started with one, I might as well just continue with that and explain how it works. Um, <clears throat> with Jenkins, essentially, the focus is that um, it ties tools together so that you can build your entire application. I mean, it's it's crazy how much it takes to actually build an application. Um, you got to use Composer to pull in all your dependencies, and then. And then maybe even, uh, I know on the major projects I'm working on now, I have to, uh, on my build environment, I have to have Ruby installed so that I can uh, use Bundler and um, grab some gems to uh, use Middleman to automatically transpile my coffee script and JavaScript and minify this and uh, I need a uh, node so I can have Bower to grab all the uh, front-end dependencies and then of course uh, well, I think middleman sparks up the SAS trans compiling of the CSS style sheets uh, and then um, I mean the list just goes on and then when you deploy you have to restart the servers that are communicating with rabbit and it's just nuts the amount of stuff that uh, the amount of moving parts and pieces to deploying an application. So it, once you learn Jenkins, it's it's amazing how, how much simpler and how quickly you can deploy. Um, now, for most of the projects that I'm working on, every time I make a commit, 
Uh, well, more specifically, every time I uh, merge a pull request, I uh, deploy the application. And uh, it makes it very simple. I mean, all you got to do is just go load data here. Let's, uh, let's see here. This is going. All right. So while that's still building, let's go ahead and I cloned down the FizzBuzz application that I created. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that. Um, in the tests folder, I have my PHP unit configuration file. Uh, in the source folder, I have my FizzBuzz application. Um, in the build folder, well, actually, I just built this. Um, so it has a ton of stuff, but I can actually take all these folders and delete them. Because they don't, uh, that's the product of creating this. Now, if you want to make life a little bit easier uh, while you're learning Jenkins, it's convenient to install all the tools that you will have Jenkins use on your local environment. So if you want your, uh, if you want your Jenkins server to run your PHP unit test, it's convenient if you already have that on your development environment so that you can just run PHP unit or my configuration files in here. So then it runs, it builds uh, the reports and goes. So if we're just working on this piece by piece, uh, we'll be able to more efficiently, effectively, with less stress, uh, get to the end product. And especially having Ant, if you have Ant installed on your development environment, you can use your Ant build file to um, run build targets. So I have a build target of lint just to lint check all the files. Build failed. Lint does not exist in Project Fizzbuzz. So let's take a look at our build file. So our build file consists of um, the project name, which for this in this case is Fizzbuzz. The default target is test. Uh, so I can just run ant test and it will run the default target because I'm using build.xml which is the default build file name for and we can move our file somewhere else and call it up specifically so we can see here that this is the target name when I ran test the uh, target test which is I believe the default target so if I were just to run and alone it would run the clean test or not clean test the clean target which would delete any um, folders that needed to be deleted. It would run the prepare target, which will create the folders again. These are just artifact folders, logs, coverage reports. Um, and then it'll run lint on all the files. You can have it only run lint on the changed files if you'd like. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Just uh, add a modified um, attribute to your uh, build XML file under the file set. Uh, what is that attribute? I'm not sure. Anyway, then it runs PHP unit configuration. Then it uh, then it's done. So our primary one is test. So let's find target name test. Test, you'll see it depends on prepare, lint, and then it runs PHP unit. Uh, so it's going to run the prepare target, as you saw. Prepare depends on clean. So then it before running prepare, it'll run the clean, clean, prepare, then lint, which is right down here. Uh, and for the lint, since this is an ant configuration file, we're going to have ant. Uh, run the executable of PHP with the argument of dash L, and we're going to run it every time that we find a file in these two directories with a file name of .php. Um, and then, of course, if lint fails, the build fails. Uh, we don't want uh, we don't want the build to go through if lint checking fails. And then after lint, it runs PHP unit. And in this case, PHP unit, using ant, we execute the executable of just simply PHP unit. We have it installed globally on our system. Uh, and then we have it fail on error. Obviously, we don't want uh, our builds to be deployed or anything like that, if, uh, or to consider them uh, passing builds if the unit test failed. And then I pass an argument to PHP unit so that it knows where its configuration file is. Um, and then that's all there is for the test. We also have a report um, target, which does everything in test first. So it runs test, and then it'll run uh, PHP loc or LOC lines of code, I guess. PHP code sniffer, uh, 
PHP depend or PHP mess detector, well, and PHP mess detector, uh, PHP copy paste detector, and PHP docs. And all of those are individual targets in my build file. We'll go through these real quick while this uh, is uh, still building. Again, the first time is the longest time it takes to get this virtual machine up. So for reports, it's going to run test. We just saw that. Um, then it's going to run PHP LOC, measure project size, and it's going to output the uh, data for that into the logs folder. It's going to run PHP CS, uh, the report. There's going to output a check style report, which is an XML file. And the standard can be found in this configuration file, PHP CS rule set. So I go over there. And the base rule set. Oh no, this is PHP MD rule set. This is PHP CS rule set. And I have uh, the rule to find is pair. I used to code to pair standard, but I changed it to PS, uh, PSR2. So this is actually going to have a ton of errors. Well, not a ton, a few errors. And then uh, when I commit these changes, having changed it to PSR2, it will uh, clean those errors up, but we'll save that change until after we're running here. Um, then p depend, of course, the configuration file. Again, uh, where is it? No, phpmd is the configuration file. phpmd rule set. So going back up to p depend, we have that output a ton of um, logs and uh, our, even our fancy little charts, our dependencies, SVG, and the overview pyramid SVG are files that, uh, little graphics that show <clears throat> a visual representation of the results there. Uh, PHP mess detector. This is our rule set again. We just glanced at the rule set. And then it'll output the uh, report file pmd.xml. We'll configure this all these in Jenkins to uh, turn these report files into easy to read consumable material. Uh, PHP copy paste detector for finding duplicate code using PHP copy paste detector. Um, and then again, this outputs a log file. And the path that we're going to run our uh, copy paste detector is against the source folder. And then PHP Docs, which has its own configuration file in the build folder. So we'll glance at that. There's nothing under package or deploy, uh, since we don't really need that in this uh, senselessly simple application. But um, packaging the application would consist of, um, well, I usually just compress all the files that are to be deployed to a server, um, and then consider it packaged. It's, it is ready to go. And then the deploy uh, usually consists of, or at least in the conventions that I use, it consists of um, connecting to these servers that it wants to deploy to, whether it's staging um, multiple development servers or production, uh, then extracting the packaged file into its own unique release folder, kind of like uh, how is that uh, Capistrano does it, and then symlinking all the configuration files and log folders, then changing the symlink that is pointing to the root directory of the web server to the new root directory uh, running, then of course stopping and starting any necessary services like our uh, message consumers, and so on and so forth. So that's uh, that there. Oh, packaging might also include, I'm not sure where it would fit in here since there's no actual style stuff, but uh, packaging or building your package, building your release might also include generating your front end, you know, trans, uh, well, either compressing, minifying all of your uh, front end code. So there we go. Uh, this last bit of red, the sea of red, as uh, it's been said in... Uh, the regular documentation or the notes that you'll read uh, when you use um, I say pup, P -U -P -H -P -E -T com configuration files, but this last sea of red here is just simply uh, downloading the uh, a few FAR files and then moving them into user local bins so that they can be globally available for running. So I'm going to vagrant SSH into this and since it's up we can go to uh, my computer. There we go. 10, 11, 12, 13.
forwards us to the port 8080, which is what Jenkins runs on default. This Jenkins has absolutely no security in place, uh, but we're going to go ahead and create a new freestyle job or project. Of course, if you're going to use Jenkins in public space where multiple individuals have access to it, you're going to want to set up security and so on, but that is not really the focus of this particular um, This particular tutorial. So we're going to create a freestyle project called FizzBuzz. In this project we're going, oh it doesn't look like it installed all the uh, plugins that I wanted installed because uh, Git is supposed to be installed in here. So. once there we go and I want to not sure if I have to run this as root or not but um, I don't think so oh yeah I do <laughs> oops yeah so This is just a simple way to get all the plugins installed. Um, if I wanted to, I could just go to back to my dashboard, manage Jenkins, and then manage plugins. We want to update all these plugins and uh, see some new available ones, but we'll let this install it. This should fire up, actually, when you Vagrant up. I'll see why I didn't do that and then uh, fix that before anybody else can get a hold of it. So it's installing all the plugins. It's in this uh, shell file. And this is in the Jenkins PHP Vagrant repo. Yeah, these are all useful. Um, build pipeline plugin is very pretty, convenient for uh, having staged builds. You know, you want to test, then you want to reports, then you want to deploy to staging, then you want to deploy to. Uh, all right, so that's that's good. Now, if we go back to my dashboard, Jenkins restarting. Oof, my computer is hot. There we go. So back to our FizzBuzz app, uh, our FizzBuzz job. And I'm going to go back to configuring it. So now we have the Git source code management source. And I'm just going to put in um, the HTTPS URL to pull the FizzBuzz. There's a detail you have to do uh, at, at the command line to pull in the uh, host keys for like GitHub or Bitbucket or any host that you're pulling uh, from using the uh, SSH plugins in Jenkins. So I'm just going to get around that by using the HTTPS. And uh, the build triggers, we're going to have it build the master branch. Uh, we're going to pull the source code management resource every five minutes. And these little question marks totally help. You can uh, learn how to use all these resources by clicking these question marks if you need to uh, work on that. Now I'm not going to add any build steps. I'm just going to save this first and build it. Obviously it's not going to do anything except for populate our workspace and start us off with a nice blue uh, circle build successful because there was no nothing to build. So I'm going to go back to the project, go to the workspace, and you'll see all the files are in the workspace. That's fantastic. So now that just means the connectivity with our 
git repos functional, although you will see a large red error underneath the repository URL if you don't have the correct uh, connectivity, uh, if you don't have the correct c credentials or URL access, so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to add a build step and I'm just going to simply invoke ant. And in this, I'm just going to use the test target. And by default, if you remember, we have in our build file, the default is test, so you don't actually have to type this. You don't have to put this in here. I'm just going to put it in there anyway. Now, uh, let's save this and just force it to build. And here's our second build. We'll go to the console output and see what it's doing. It's preparing, clean, prepare, lint. PHP unit could not read tests, PHP unit.xml. Well, let's go back to our workspace and There's a space in front of that. That's interesting. So let's go here. PHP unit. C. And then let's just add base directory. That should work now. Let's just send this back to the server, build.xml. Uh, let's just commit and push that. We'll just hope it's right. <laughs> And of course, if I want to, I'll just go over here and run ant. PHP unit runs fine here, so let's go back to the previous build, or actually go back to our project and build now. It, since we have it polling the server, uh, the git repo every five minutes, it should. Um, can't read it apparently. So now I'm going to go into what Verilib, Jenkins, Jobs, uh, Fizzbuzz job, Fizzbuzz, oh. Go into the workspace and just ant. Gotta switch over to be the Jenkins user. So. Could not read. So. can read it. It just doesn't want to. Yeah, well, let's get around this in an inappropriate way by just taking the PHP unit folder, putting it up a directory, it will be able to read it here, and then 
tests, I believe, will be the folder. Bootstrap pull, bootstrap file will be in tests. So now, ant page build unit. Nope, nope. Got to change the actual build file too. Boom. So PHP unit. Where is it? Tests. Actually, we don't need to tell it where the configuration file is because PHP unit should be able to run right out of this directory now. There we go. And then uh, ant PHP unit. Ant target names are case sensitive. All right, so this worked. Now uh, let's commit these changes up. So boom, boom. Moved PHP unit configuration. So boom. There we go. Fantastic. Back to the project, build it again. Passing, that's great. Okay, so it did the lint, the clean prepare lint, PHP unit ran fine, great. So we've got um, we've got our initial one passing. So we should call we should have called this one project fizzbuzz tests or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the dashboard and I'm going to create a new item. Called uh, uh, is Buzz Reports and copy this from is Buzz. So we're just duplicating an existing project. All right. So then it'll have the Git repo and everything like that. Now, I'm, but instead, I'm not going to just do test. I'm going to do report I believe yeah just report which will run the test and then once it's done reporting all right now I'm gonna go back to the dashboard go back to my fizzbuzz and I'm gonna configure this to have a post build trigger add post build actions I'm going to have a post build trigger of building the other project, this buzz reports. So once this project builds successfully, it's going to run the reports on the files. Um, now, let's see, oh, Fizzbuzz reports hasn't run yet, so let's just build this one now. And watch it build, see if it builds. <laughs> So prepare, land PHP unit, PHP lines of code ran, PHP CS ran, pdpenge running, PHP MD, PHP copy paste detector, PHP docs, oh, dash, F build. So there's an error there, but this won't, uh, this doesn't care if PHP docs fails, so, but let's take a look here. Oh, yeah, here. So F is one argument. And then the next argument is going to... That's probably what was wrong with um, the PHP unit is I didn't pass it one argument, let it go a space, and then pass the next uh, piece of the argument. Um, let me see if that makes a difference. But now, okay, commit and push. Most of uh, all right. These are all errors. It's trying to give me errors here, but 
Um, PHP Storm apparently doesn't read these ant build files very well or doesn't understand them completely. So um, either way, this is a successful build. So now if we go back and look at our uh, Fizbus Reports workspace, we will find that uh, the build folder has a ton of uh, uh, content. So we've got all of our logs, which is going to have the check style, jdpen, php log, pmd, pmd copy paste detector. Um, we're going to have our coverage we should have got our coverage reports from PHP unit running. Uh, well, you should have our API if PHP docs was running correctly. We have our p depend um, graphics. So, uh, and then our uh, our p depend overview pyramid. And we can actually put these on the dashboard of uh, not the dashboard on the home page, if you will, of this uh, particular project. But uh, so now let's go back and configure this project. Because this is the reporting, so obviously we want it to um, we want it to publish the report. So let's just publish a check style analysis, which will be in build logs check style. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I didn't want to hit enter. All right, and then we wanted to let's see what else we got here. This is do all that we can. Publish PMD analysis results, which is going to be build logs PMD, I believe. Yep. Uh, and all this stuff you can find. All these files you can find them in their uh, individual configuration. So if I'm looking at build. Uh, .xml, I can see that phpcs is creating these, this check style uh, XML file as a report. Uh, I can see that pdpend is producing these uh, overview um, graphics and then jdpend XML file and so on. So uh, if you're looking where to find these files, you can either glance in the workspace folder after building the project for the first time or you can um, look in your configuration file. So publish duplicate code analysis that will be logs Oops, yeah. Copy paste detector. Duplicate code. That sounds right. Oh. Every time you hit enter when you're selecting, um, oh, it already produced our check style warnings. Must have uh, automatically ran uh, build based on the fact that the uh, repo had changed. So, anyway, and it'll tell you if these files don't exist. Let's just keep adding more um, post build actions. So, we want to. Might as well publish the Clover reports, huh? Uh, build oh, Clover. How can we don't click enter? All right. And then what? I think I have a JUnit file. This is nonsensical, but the whole app doesn't seem sensical. Test report XML. Build logs JUnit.xml. Uh, let's go take a look at our Fizzbus. No, our our configuration file for a PHP unit, and this will be yeah build logs, junit.xml. Uh, oh shoot! I need to fix this because this configuration file is no longer in the right place. So the PHP unit configuration file is not going to actually put these things where they're supposed to be. So um, Save this and go back. Uh, let's just commit these changes. PHP unit. Um, build on There we go. Commit push. Push. There we go. So, and it says it's not there right now, but uh, let's just trust that it will be. So, build logs, Clover, um, and then we'll publish an HTML report. Let's see here. Actually, let's just skip this HTML report thing for right now and uh, save this. And 
while we're at this. So we've got this one built twice. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. You'll see that we have Fizzbuzz and Fizzbuzz reports. So let's do an in, let's uh, change this up so that it looks cooler anyway, and build a pipeline view uh, and call this Fizzbuzz pipeline. Now, since we since we went back and we made the primary Fizzbuzz the tests uh, project or an item, whatever they call them here. Uh, automatically fire up another build we want to have that is our initial job the primary one the tests one uh, we're going to call this fizzbuzz pipeline view um, our layout is going to be based on the upstream downstream relationships we want to always allow manual triggers just for fun and lightbox works for displaying the console output and apply so now if we click OK, we'll have a new view. So we have the pipeline view. So if we were to just run this, boom. Oh, you know what? I want to manage. Nope. Yeah, I want to configure this view and have it show at least three builds back. So we can see how many times we fail and win. All right, so we didn't have this uh, running four views and number four, I don't believe. So, and you can see that it just finished up uh, running the sixth FizzBuzz uh, project or building it the sixth time, and it built the FizzBuzz reports for the third time. So if we go to the FizzBuzz reports result, uh, we have our um, we have our check style warnings for this particular build. We have uh, our PMD warnings. We have our Clover summary reports for our uh, test coverage. Um, and if we go back up to the project, we will have all this stuff uh, reported out. So it shows that I have, on my check style report, it shows that I have 18 issues. And I'm going to go ahead and fix some of these so you can see this trend go down. Uh, we have access to our Clover summary report. And I'm going to go to the workspace here, and we should now have in our build folder, API um, PHP docs, I believe. Yeah, so we have our PHP docs folder, and which has all of our um, oh, those are classic XML file. That's PHP docs XML file. We want the API folder and classes, I believe. There we go. This is an HTML output of that, uh, the PHP docs compile um, result of this. So I don't know why the styling is not there, but um, now we have our classes. Why isn't this going? The output is kind of uh, failing me here. But either way, this is like uh, PHP, this is PHP docs. It's just not uh, producing a very understandable uh, HTML output at the moment. And then the XML for that is all in the PHP docs here. So I'm going to go to here and then um, we're going to have our workspace file, the SVG showing the instability. We want to add that to our workspace. I'm going to um, go back to FizzBuzz reports and add a description. This is, says it's escaped HTML. So I'm just going to FizzBuzz reports, workspace build, P to bend. And then, uh, what was the other one? There was something else. Uh, build, P to bend, overview pyramid is what it was. Now I'm going to submit this. So it'll show these two, but since it's not, it's using escaped HTML, so let's just manage Jenkins. Uh, configure global security, I believe. Uh, and use raw HTML in our descriptions. So I'll save that. Go back to Jenkins, go back to our FizzBuzz reports, and we should have our, our SVGs of the uh, Swiss PHP P depend results, the graphics that have been produced. We still have our check style trend and our code coverage. Uh, our code coverage summary has been produced so that we can use that again. Um, Fizzbuzz, 
and it shows us all, all this beautiful check style warnings and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to glance at the check style warnings and uh, see if I can't fix some of these and show you how this drops. So FISBA's line 12, incomplete license. Why? Oh, I was supposed to change this to PSR2. Okay, so this is the PHPCS uh, code style rule set. And we're changing it to PSR2. Push this up. And go back to our projects. Actually, I'm just going to go back to the home page, go back to our pipeline, and build our pipeline again. Done with the tests that passed. If the test failed, it wouldn't do the, uh, it wouldn't run the reports. And you can chain up a ton of these. They can be in any series. Uh, you can have them running the, the pipeline builds, showing parallel runs, uh, all kinds of awesome stuff. So anyway, now we are on watching build number four. I'm going to go back to the project. And we'll see that our check style transcends build number three to build number four, drop down to what, two. Looks like we've got two errors there. And I'm going to guess that they're namespace uh, requirements because this is an older project before I started following PSR2. I actually had it uh, running pair two, so it didn't require anything to be in a namespace, which is a fun switch. Um, but then, oh, here's an end of new line. Zero phone, so. This was up here to be line 103. We're supposed to go here. Oh, yeah, there's supposed to be one space at the end. And then uh... all right, something dumb. Push these changes up. And just for the fun of it, back to the project, back to our home page, see the whole pipeline. You don't actually have to see this. You can uh, you can watch these individual projects, see how they're rolling on their, their own. You can fire them off like this. Just I'm going to fire off the project from here, schedule the build, and then if I go view the pipeline, it'll show that the build is running. It's convenient. It's really nice. Uh, you can check out the history, see uh, where and when builds have failed, why. Um, broken since this build. Um, this is just a wonderful tool, and uh, this is really all you need to get started. I mean, I suppose I could just continue going on babbling, but um, uh, you don't need that. So now the reports show that uh, nothing about uh, PHPMD really has changed. Uh, I fixed one um, textile trend. Uh, there's a whole one PMD is a, else is never necessary, and you can simplify the code. Right. So, oops. There we go. So, that should work. Yep, did so. Boom, boom. So I'm pushing this back up. Obviously, um, this isn't following any kind of Git flow of any sort, but um, it shows you how uh, Jenkins works. And I probably wasted enough of your time here. And of course, if I just wanted to run the reports, I could just run the reports by itself. Um, so it's scheduled this uh, run. And oh, this was reports. There we go. PMD trend down to none. So, uh, and that's, I guess, the ideal situation. You want to just always, I know that uh, having, working with a lot of developers or a few developers, you know, my team, uh, we always have to have this check style trend going down. If we've absorbed a new project, the focus is, of course, to uh, clean it without breaking it. Um, test result trend. And that's it. I mean, this is fully functional. This is as functional as you want it. Uh, don't be afraid to go in and configure the crap out of Jenkins to uh, make it do anything that you'd like. I, I kind of stick to 
putting as much as I possibly can in the ant build script. Uh, I also like to, as you've seen on uh, the template for Jenkins Jobs here, uh, he, or the individual that created this, has a you know PHP lines of code for the um, continuous integration server, and then a P PHP LOC for running it on the command line. So you can just simply go to ant, and instead of uh, this one, instead of typing like PHP unit or whatever, you can just uh, ant PHP unit or um, ant lint and uh, use ant in your local development environment to run these. I know that I personally use ant on some of our larger projects to uh, pull all the tools required to build the front end madness together, you know, uh, compressing the JavaScript and uh, transpiling the CSS. I don't really mess with CoffeeScript, but uh, it's in there in a few places. So. Um, and Ant can do all of that. All you have to do is just make sure that the resources are installed on the server that you're preparing for uh, using Ant. You should be able to just go on and at the com command line um, run PHP, C well PHP CS is a bad one unless you do version, or run PHP unit. Uh, you should be able to have all of the, uh, the correct PHP version running on your uh, environment. This is the uh, Jenkins PHP Vagrant virtual machine, so um, it's just running whatever I think, what, 5.5.2? It's really enough, but uh, well, not really. It should be running a newer version. That's it. That is it. I'm done. We'll cover some more cool stuff later. Uh, in the meantime, just have fun with your pipeline build, and then uh, whenever you want, just trigger these up. You can always restart them, see what's going on. It's fantastic tool. Jenkins is just amazing. I hope you find this useful.